This crematorium furnace has been burned apart. Its lower part has crumbled. This crematorium burns a body in 20 minutes, one every 20 minutes, and the furnace at the back has been destroyed. At a time when the tsunami of epidemics in China is becoming more fierce, the Chinese Healthcare Commission and the Chinese National Immigration Administration announced on the evening of December 26 and 27, respectively, that starting from January 8, 2023, applications for ordinary passports for Chinese citizens traveling and visiting friends overseas, as well as travel and business visas to Hong Kong, will be resumed. As part of lifting border control measures on January 8, the Immigration Bureau's announcement stated that the processing of applications for visa extension or renewal for foreigners will also resume. Customs clearance by land and water will be gradually restored. This has led to international concern, or the world has been frightened. Data from C-Trip, a major Chinese travel website, showed that searches for popular overseas destinations exploded tenfold following the government's announcement. According to Trip.com, holiday bookings for outbound flights from mainland China jumped 254% on the morning of December 27th compared to the day before. At present, the prices of air tickets on long-haul routes, such as those from China to Central Europe and the United States, are still high. The main reason behind this is the low supply of seats. Low-cost tickets are still available on the routes with ample supply of seats, such as those to Japan, South Korea, and Southeast Asia. But the ticket prices are expected to rise in the short term due to the increased demand. Milan's main airport, Malpensa, started testing passengers arriving from Beijing and Shanghai on December 26. The results showed that about half of them were infected. That is, 35 out of 62 passengers from China on the first flight tested positive for COVID, while on the second flight, 62 out of the 120 passengers tested positive. When COVID-19 spread overseas from Wuhan in early 2020, Italy became the first European country to be hit hard. It is now also the first European country to announce mandatory COVID-19 testing for arrivals from China. The Italian health minister issued a statement saying he has ordered mandatory COVID-19 testing for all travelers from China, including passengers transiting Italy. Ministro Ministro Schillaci ha immediatamente disposto il tampone per chiunque arrivi dalla Cina. Misura che però rischia di essere non completamente efficace se non è presa a livello europeo, perché noi sappiamo che possiamo farlo per i voli che arrivano direttamente dalla Cina, ma non per esempio con quelli che arrivano via scalo. Quindi io ho chiesto al Ministro Schillaci, che ha immediatamente operato in questo senso, di scrivere al Commissario europeo competente per questa materia per chiedere che sia l'Unione a prendere un provvedimento in questo senso. Il Ministro Salvini ha fatto la stessa cosa con eh, diciamo, l'omologo europeo dei trasporti, ci aspettiamo e auspichiamo che l'Unione Europea voglia fare da questo punto di vista, una, eh, diciamo, voglia operare eh, in questo senso. Dopodiché, eh... Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida announced on December 27 that the restrictions on Chinese travelers' immunization will be tightened and that only four airports will be available for entry for flights from China, Hong Kong and Macau as of December 30th. Those who have visited mainland China within seven days as well as all passengers from mainland China will be required to be tested upon arrival in Japan, adding that those who test positive will be quarantined for a week. The policy will take effect on December 30th. Chinese 
に4人の大臣が交代することとなりました、うんえー、中国本土からの渡航者、および中国本土に7日以内の渡航歴のあるものすべてに、入国時検査を実施するということ、まあ、第二に、入国時検査での陽性者については、すべてゲノム解析の対象とし、待機施設で原則7日間隔離、7日間隔離といたします。いいですか South Korea's Epidemic Prevention Department said on December 27th that we are closely monitoring the outbreak in China and the emergence of new mutant strains, and that we are reviewing the need for further action. 1월 5일부터 중국에서 우리나라로 출발하는 항공기 탑승하는 모든 내 외국인은 탑승 시 48시간 이내 PCR 또는 24시간 이내 전문가 신속 항원 검사 음성 확인 결과를 제출하여야 합니다. 중국 내 공간에서의 단기 비자 발급을 제한합니다. 방역 상황이 안정될 때까지 당분간 중국에서 국내로의 단기 여행 등을 자제할 필요가 있습니다. The Hong Kong government has maintained the same pace as mainland China and plans to reopen its border with the mainland by mid-January. The optimized measures are, first, lifting the quarantine order. There will no longer be any close contacts tracing. Second, canceling the vaccine pass. Third, removing all mandatory PCR tests for inbound travelers. Visitors coming from overseas, the mainland, Macau and Taiwan, do not have to do mandatory PCR tests when they arrive or after they arrive in Hong Kong. Instead, visitors are advised to do rapid antigen tests all the way through the fifth day since their arrival. Fourth, canceling all social distancing rules, but the mask mandate will continue. It can be assumed that after the gate of customs clearance is opened, a large number of mainland China tourists who may carry the virus will treat Hong Kong as a portal to avoid the outbreak, snatch up medicines, and treat the sick. The outbreak will thus naturally spread to all of Hong Kong. Taiwan announced on December 28th that it will tighten quarantine on arrivals from China starting January 1, 2023. Due to the rising outbreak in China and lack of information. For its part, Taiwan expects tens of thousands of mainland visitors to come to Taiwan during the Chinese New Year in late January 2023. India is the fastest to take action, with its health minister announcing as early as December 24th that India will make it mandatory for arrivals, including those from China, to provide proof of a negative COVID 19 test. Keeping in view the way in which coronavirus is spreading in China, passengers flying from countries like China, Japan, South Korea, Singapore, Thailand, Bangkok will be tracked. They will be required to upload an RT-PCR report before boarding the flight, and they will go through thermal screening after landing in India. Malaysia has taken additional tracking and surveillance measures as well, and the Philippines is considering testing. We believe that during the production of this video, more countries will join the bandwagon, and more restrictive policies will likely be imposed on Chinese tourists. According to Reuters, U.S. officials said on December 27th that Washington is considering tightening entry epidemic prevention measures for Chinese travelers to the U.S., given the lack of transparency in the epidemic data released by Beijing authorities and American concerns about the CCP's outbound customs clearance. The official also added that the international community is worried about the re-emergence of the epidemic in China and the lack of transparency in publishing data. Currently, the CCP authorities have no imports of vaccines from other countries and have tightened controls on special medicines imported from overseas. Four previous U.S. statements in response to the outbreak in China have expressed concern about the lack of transparency of the situation by the Beijing authorities and the desire to provide medical support to the Chinese people. These offers have been repeatedly rejected by the CCP. Uh, the rest of the world as well. Um, 
We, uh, the United States continues to be a leading force uh, for countries around the world in the provision of uh, vaccines and helping countries uh, overcome uh, the acute phase uh, of the virus. Uh, we certainly hope uh, that will be the case uh, before long in the PRC as well. Why did the CCP refuse overseas help? Previously, the Beijing government tried to engage in a race for vaccines with the U.S. and Germany. It introduced several vaccines and engaged in worldwide vaccine diplomacy, providing significant amounts of vaccines to other developing countries worldwide. So, if it accepts vaccines from the U.S., the CCP would regard it as slapping itself in the face. Ending another surge of the outbreak in China seems a remote wish now. And it's not clear how the outbreak will evolve in the future. In reality, there is a high degree of uncertainty. Ample evidence suggests that this outbreak wave is characterized by high mortality rates and severe symptoms. The CCP has claimed both domestically and internationally that the Chinese outbreak is similar to the global one and that it's of the same type as Omicron. Under the CCP's information control, a significant portion of the Chinese population still believes in this claim and is, therefore, actively preparing for their travels. This epidemic is not a special situation for human beings, and we have not suffered much loss. It is all economic losses. It will gradually open up sooner or later because everyone recognizes that this disease will always exist, no matter if we reopen or not. It won't disappear. It's no different from a cold or many other infectious diseases. You can't eliminate it. Actually, it will coexist with humans. As to reopening now or later, I mean, an early release is far stronger than being late. There isn't much difference as long as it's not like a cholera outbreak. I have relatives living there. We have not seen each other for many years. Earlier, they would come back or we visited them. While due to the pandemic, they have not come back for a long time. Neither did us go over. Talking about travel, we want to take a look at how other people do. Yet, the CCP knows well in its own mind the reality of the situation. What it has decided to do is, in effect, to spread the epidemic to the world. Concerning the requirements of other countries to impose COVID-19 tests on arriving Chinese nationals, the Chinese Foreign Ministry has expressed its displeasure and anger on multiple occasions. The current COVID situation in the world continues to call for a science-based response approach and joint effort to ensure safe cross-border travel, keep global industrial and supply chains stable, and restore world economic growth. We've always believed that for all countries, COVID response measures need to be science-based and proportionate without affecting normal people-to-people -people exchange. We have also noted that quite a few countries have spoken positively about China's provisional measures on cross-border travel and that they hope such travel will further pick up with greater ease. This seems to repeat the episode from three years ago when the Red government engaged in a cover-up and used fabricated data when the outbreak began to spread in China in 2020. The Trump administration was the first to issue a travel ban on China, and the CCP cursed the U.S. for it. But soon, the world learned that it was too late for the U.S. to act, and the epidemic had already spread to the world through tourists from Wuhan City. Chinese people are victims too, as is the tourism industry, which is on the verge of bankruptcy due to a long period of lockdowns and is now desperately trying to recover. The travel services have been suspended for three years. Information about overseas hotels and employees have also changed. So we are now integrating the previous resources, learning more about the current market situation, mapping out routes, thinking about the selling points, and making adjustments in our tour packages. We are currently restarting international and regional routes. There are also some intercontinental routes, and we will also add flights to some existing international flights. Previously, official Chinese internal documents showed that a total of 248 million people, or close to 18% of the total population, were infected during the 20-day period from December 1st to 20th. However, on December 20th, government officials revised the criteria for identifying fatalities from COVID-19. 
Now, only deaths from pneumonia and respiratory failure caused by the virus are classified as fatalities from the virus. It's actually contrary to international practice. On December 27th, China's Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported three fatalities from COVID-19. First, we will make adjustments to the content of our data reporting. We will report the number of existing hospitalized cases, the existing severe cases, including critical cases, and the cumulative number of deaths. We will report no more on close contacts, and there will be no distinction between local cases and imported ones in our report. Second, we will make adjustments to the frequency of the report. We will make dynamic adjustments in accordance with the epidemic situation, manage the disease under the category of class B and announce the data on a monthly basis. The credibility of the officially published confirmed cases and the death toll by the CCP has always been questioned. In busy funeral homes, people must accept the conditions set by the funeral homes. This is a notice posted at the reception counter of a funeral home somewhere in China. It reads, I promise that the deceased died not due to the new coronavirus pneumonia. If there is any cover-up, I am willing to take all responsibilities. Multiple systems in China are working together to erase the files and data on the new coronavirus pneumonia. If you are determined to get a report like this, you will find it virtually an impossible task. Hello doctor, I would like to ask if I can get a diagnostic certificate for new coronary pneumonia here. Diagnostic certificate is not available. Why not? Your nucleic acid test can only prove that you have been infected with the new coronavirus, but to prove you have pneumonia, you must do a CT to determine. I finished the CT and blood test. What if you didn't have pneumonia last night when doing the CT? What if I had pneumonia? If there is pneumonia, we generally won't prescribe such a diagnostic certificate to anyone. Why? The nucleic acid test you did before needs to be sent to the city of Shanghai or to the Pudong Hospital CTC, some sort of agency, to confirm the test. If your original test was positive, the one you tested elsewhere, you must be placed in a hospital to be tested again. The blood specimens and nucleic acid of the saliva specimens will be sent to a new facility for testing. Only after they have confirmed a positive of test result will we produce this report for you. Without their confirmation report, we won't issue the diagnosis to you. We will only certify that you have a respiratory tract infection. In other words, common folks can only use their own eyes to judge how many people have been killed by this outbreak tsunami. This is our town, Anshan City, Liaoning Province. People say that this virus doesn't kill. But look around, how many people have died? The more can't fit anymore. This is a temporary modification of the underground garage. I'm not scaring people by exaggerating things. Look how many people have passed away here. Now, don't get sick, especially serious illness, because now no doctor is available to see you. Over the past two days, because my father was sick, I went to the emergency room of the hospital every day. I personally witnessed the misery in the hospital. It's difficult to see a doctor, difficult to be admitted, difficult to be treated. I'll tell you three things I witnessed personally. I don't dare to say more. First, every day when I waited for the doctor in the emergency department, there would be people coming in and asking the doctor how to issue the death certificate. Second, the floor of the emergency room was filled with patients and only one doctor per dozens of patients. Emergency vehicles kept bringing in new patients too. Third, in the CT exam room, a young woman in front of me brought her mother to the doctor alone. Her mother was quite chubby and when she got off the exam bed, she was too weak to get up. The girl couldn't help her mother into the wheelchair by herself. She was in tears. My sister and I helped her get her mother into the wheelchair. To be honest, I feel very sad. It's too difficult to be the only child in the family at this time. That's all I have to say. I am afraid to say more than that. I now understand this saying, a grain of dust of history, when it lands on each person, it's as heavy as a mountain. We have many videos showing hospitals and crematoriums all over China with corpses piling up. But we can't show them. The sensitivity of the images would lead to a yellow labeling. We can only replace them with busy scenes from funeral homes and crematoriums. 
Please know these footages aren't from old episodes, but are all recent ones. <coughs> this is a street in Tianjin. Hearses are lined up. The line is so long that you can't see the end. This is a funeral home in Sichuan province. Its basement is full of bodies. The funeral parlor has temporarily built 20 rooms to store the bodies. This is Luan Nan, now the busiest place. Look at these people, these hearses, how many people and vehicles. It's the busiest place in the country. Take a look. My gosh, there are still many vehicles that can't get into the crematorium. These are the vehicles that haul the bodies. They can't even get a number. Look, how much in demand this place is. Why has it become like this? It is now 2.50 a.m. on December 27, 2022 at Nanchang Funeral Parlor. So many vehicles have started to line up. There are already more than 80 vehicles. The line starts here. Look how many people there are. Here, here, and here. Excuse me, sorry. People are everywhere waiting. The scene is scary. This is a crematorium in Guangzhou. People are lining up to get a number. Some have waited for two days but haven't received a number. This is the smoke from the crematorium. It's so heavy, the smoke is rolling non-stop. The excessive business has made China's funeral industry feel huge pressure. Look, this is in Wuhan, a workshop manufactures funeral hearses in a rush. These days, we have been making coffins. We have to do it all day long. We sold 18 coffins in three days and 36 in five or six days. It isn't a joke, it's true. We made a dozen before. They are all sold out. We are working overtime. These are just made. They are done using the old method. We use no nails. Can you see it? It's important to note that as this wave of the epidemic continues, it's not just the elderly whose lives are at risk. If you recover from this, it's a positive turning negative, but you will still constantly cough or have blood clots in your sputum, feel tight and uncomfortable in your chest, or have a high fever that won't go away. It's more than 38 degrees lasting 3 to 5 days, etc. Really, you should go to the hospital to get a CT. Ugh, this condition, this pneumonia, does not only happen to the elderly, but also to young people. It's relatively less, but there are still some. So, young people should also watch out for it. Stay alert, that's all. I am gonna rest now. In many hospitals, people see more and more young people coming to see the doctor.
Recently, many infected patients have developed white lungs, a symptom typical of the Wuhan outbreak in 2020. It generally refers to the appearance of a large white lung on X-ray or CT examination in patients with severe pneumonia. Chinese media reported on December 27 that a doctor in Shanghai said that it seems that COVID-19 has caused more severe and more cases than before after the epidemic controls are lifted. Google search suggests that there is no cure for white lung and it eventually leads to death. Chinese netizens have expressed concern about the white lung phenomena. The Chinese government is quick to dispel the rumors with officials from the Chinese Health Commission and local officials in Beijing and Wuhan saying that white lung doesn't mean the emergence of a more deadly strain of the original virus. But as you know, official Chinese denials usually mean rumors are true. <laughs> Yeah.